uh, our next presenter, uh, and again, this round of applause has got to be, you know, crazy. It's in the room, so it's a, it's an act in the space right now. Presenting on recycled content in roads and actually stepping in to fill a position, actually. So we've got somebody who's just gone, all right, somebody can't make it. I'm going to step in and be an absolute legend and fill that space. The Project Director of Civil Delivery uh, from Dipple, can you please put your hands together and go crazy for Richard Underhill. Does that to go forward? Good, okay. All these instructions, so hopefully I've got it under control. Um, the types and sources of recycled material are diverse and varying quality and consistency with not all recycled material, materials being suitable for road construction. Recycled materials are often waste materials from other resources. Uh, oh, sorry. Recycled materials are often waste material from other processes with some materials regarding requiring significant processing to ensure their properties are suitable for recycling or reuse into roads. So as I said, my name is Richard Undill. I'm a project director with the Department of Infrastructure Planning and Logistics. And I've got the fortunate um, privilege of presenting to today on uh, the topic of recycling and roadworks. Found it interesting, I found it interesting in the session, we had a presentation on nappies. Never thought I'd come to something on recycling about nappies, but that was interesting. A lot of um, statistics and information provided there was good. So just to go through with the um, topics that we'll be covering in this um, short presentation. So we'll just be covering our our current term um, existing specifications, just um, four sections of it. Uh, overview, overview of products that can be used in roadworks. Um, Ausroads and the state road authorities where they are at recycling. I think you would have heard Ausroads mentioned in the previous presentation. And uh, Duple, where to in the future? I find this an interesting um, discussion point. Uh, questions? So our roadwork master specification. So these requirements are intended to ensure that the recycled material materials perform to equivalent or better standard when compared with traditional or non-renewable materials in the intended application. Departing from these specifically need to reduction in performance and or increase in the whole of life costs, which is not desirable. All our life cost means maintenance. We spend a lot more money on our maintenance, so maybe not get the life of the product. So in our, in our standard um, specification, uh, suite of specifications, we've got four, four um, sections that we have the option for recycling. So section eight, which is to do with re, uh, spray seal, there's the option allows for Recycle tire rubber in sprayed seal. Section nine, which is our dense grade asphalt. That allows for the use of recycled asphalt pavement material. So we allow 10% in our wearing course. And when we do use it as a base course, we allow it as 15% into our base course. Section 12, which is for our drainage works. There we do allow for, there's allowance for crushed glass to be used as bedding material. Uh, section 14, road furniture that allows for the use of recycled plastic mullards. As our, yeah. So when we put out most of our, majority of our tenders that we do put out allow for alternatives, but as we do, we have a condition that there has to be a conforming tender applied, I mean, su submitted with it. Uh, we don't generally don't get many alternative tenders and we very and I'm not sure on the intake or the uptake on recycled material. So materials that have potential to be recycled into our roadway projects 
I guess you would have picked that up already from the sections I went through about what's allowed in, what we've got currently allowed in our standard specifications. So mentioned our recycled asphalt, which is commonly referred to RAP. Some people may call it recycled asphalt payment, others refer to it as reclaimed asphalt payment, but it's the same, same thing. Crushed glass, where I mentioned again was for bedding. Concrete, there's opportunity to use concrete around. Crushed, it's so crushed and screened. I guess the screen is to, be, um, to make sure there's no contamination in it to such as reinforcement. Tire rubber, which is crumbed, which our previous presenta uh, presenter mentioned about it and it's been used around the country. And then plastic, the opportunity for um, plastic. I suppose one of the other questions we need to ask us, is there a place for construction and demolition waste? Okay, recycled asphalt or reclaimed asphalt, which I mentioned is asphalt removed from existing road pavement and is, and is reprocessed by crushing or screening for the use in new asphalt or other approved materials and other approved materials is more into our pavements such as our base and sub base or full. So this is, a, this is only available when we, are manuf when we are resurfacing roads and milling the existing surface. So I'd just like to clarify when we say resurfacing roads that's re and re milling, that's our roads that have got asphalt on their surface. So that's majority of our urban roads. We don't have it on any of our uh, rural roads or remote roads. That's just a spray sealed. So currently with Within Dipple, our urban asphalt program removes approximately 3,000 tons of material per year. And it's generally at a 40 millimeter depth. Why 40 millimeters? Because that's the depth of our asphalt we use. And after that, it goes down into our pavement, which is either front cross rock or natural gravel. I'm informed that this equates to approximately 800 meters of new 200 millimeter sub base for road and approximately 3.6 kilometers of 150 millimeter base for a shared path, shared path being a cycle and pedestrian path. The distances sound quite amazing, but that's obviously been mixed with other um, products that we use. So as one of the things about our reclaimed asphalt pavement is that it's contaminated because as we're removing it, it invariably will pick up part of our, our base and that's not um, suitable for reuse in asphalt. And as it's been mentioned previously, it requires crushing and screening and detailed management plan to reassure um, to reuse the materials in asphalt. Continue on with our asphalt. It's, um, Yeah, so it can be used in our road base mixture, sub base for fulls, which it doesn't require much treatment. We just basically got to crush it up. And that's fine if it's got a bit of contamination because that will be from our pavement. It's, it's been widely used in the rural areas of driveway materials or can be widely used in rural areas, driveway materials. Our Butcherman group informs me it's been extensively used as Hill and Valley racetrack for footpaths and roads. And I'd just like to clarify, it's not on the actual track, it's on the internal roads that it's been, been used. Which one can appreciate the actual track requires a whole complete different treatment. Until we use a full depth asphalt pavement, most um, recycled asphalt pavement will be contaminated, but it's good for general roadworks. And other state road authorities use a lot of deep pavement built with asphalt. The reason being that they have a lot of um, pavements that are actually constructed out of asphalt. And then they just got their wearing course on top. Our bitumen section informs me that a local company has been storing the recycled or reclaimed asphalt pavement for the past five years and has accumulated approximately a thousand tons.
glass, glass or crushed glass. So recycled crushed glass used in road construction is produced from food and beverages containers that are typically not suitable or, or processing is uneconomical for being recycled back into glass. There's one of the other things, the removal of potential contaminants such as plastic and metal lids, paper labels, sugar, res sugar residual and other contaminants from commingling recycling is potentially an issue. We also need to ensure the material is sufficiently clean for the intended use. So as mentioned in early on, it can be used for bedding material. It must be fine graded, clean, washed, and treated or tested for contaminants. Uh, it can be, can be added to asphalt as fines, but must be clean. And because if it's not clean, it can cause our asphalt to strip and we wouldn't want that to happen. Additive to sub-base and sub-grade materials. It's an additive to concrete as fines, and we say non-structural, so we suppose it has to be a bit more done on structural concrete, such as what gets used in bridges. Oh. Decorative surfacing, surfacing, you know, on footpaths, I think if you look around town, you would see the occasional footpath has got to use some crushed glass or our infill of our traffic islands in the middle of the road. And one of the comments is it's currently not produced to the required dimple standard in the NT, so not used. And I think one of the other issues there is like a chicken before the egg, it's the amount that's also required to be used. And, um, and then also as it goes, it has to be competitive in priced. Recycle concrete. And it can be recycled in or mixed into our road base and full material. Um, mixed with recycled or reclaimed asphalt pavement to produce pavement materials. I believe there's a research paper out on mixed with recycled rubber to, to make fry crust rock or similar to fry crust rock. It can be used as select full and back full and then used as, re, used as a concrete aggregate with non-structural concrete again. As I mentioned previously, we also got to make sure it hasn't got contaminates such, such as uh, reinforcing and mixed with the concrete, which can um, impact on the life of, of whatever area it's been worked in or used in. Tire rubber or which was a few things we mentioned in our previous presentation. So it says it can be bolted into bitumen, but when it's been used for sealing applications, there's a 20% increase to the application rate. So which means it will push up our cost. And we just got to consider, I know everything around it, but we also got to consider if there's increasing cost, how does that impact on how much we can get done each year? There's several manufacturers in Australia of crumb rubber. And as, as our previous presenter mentioned, no, there's not an opportunity in territory. Well, there's not one manufacturing territory, but again, it goes back to being economically viable the amount that can be produced. And I don't, I don't know if that we'll be able to support that amount just in the territory alone. It can be shredded and added into full materials. Again, I believe it, there's been a research paper done which added to crushed concrete. And I guess just a statistic from our side, Dipple spray approximately 2.5 million liters of bitumen each year on the reseal. This equates to using 375 tons of rubber. A lot of our, I suppose a lot of our um, bitumen that we refer to that's that's across the territory so it's in the Catherine region Alice Springs tenant uh, 
So tire rubber. So one of the things that crumb rubber is manufactured from the end of life tires. It's mainly truck tires and not steel radial. Because we don't want to end up with the steel contaminating the our crumb rubber. They say it's um it gets to five crumb gets down to five millimeters or less. It cannot be added as large chunks. And then with bitumen is bitumen is generally only heated to about 200 degrees. So the rubber does not actually melt into it unless it's digested for a long period. So it's actually a bit of a filler amongst the bitumen. So can it be used for can be used for many applications other than roadworks? Can it be used in new tires, athletic tracks, matting services, and installation? Plastic. Plastic bags and printed cartridges into bitumen. So there's note less than 0.5% as the bitumen becomes too stiff and cracked. As we should appreciate our bitumen and our pavement has got to be flexible. If it gets too, too rigid, it will crack and then that will lead to the deterioration and not getting the full life of our pavement. Plastic remolding to posts, such as guide posts, bollards, fence posts, park benches. Using as a fill in asphalt, I guess it goes, goes up with that top line. Just a small percentage. Just a question posed as a high risk product when used in infill and embankments with leaching. What's the potential leaching? And does plastic have any performance benefits in roadwork materials? I guess one of the other things with plastic is understanding and managing the risks that potentially could harm could cause harm to the environment, community, and workers during both construction and maintenance, and then during the life of it. Oz roads and state road authorities, what's happening in some of those areas? So, talk about the state road authorities. So, most uh, state road authorities are not mandating but facilitating the increased use of recycled materials in roadworks. They've started to increase the amount of reclaimed asphalt pavement used in asphalt. Up to 40% in asphalt pavement layers. So Dipple does, does very little deep lift um, pavement. So for us, a good um, reclaimed asphalt pavement is scarce. State road authorities are increasing the use of crumb rubber in reseals and asphalt. And they also have a specific, they're looking at their specifications for recycled glass in asphalt and road bases. Most trials in Australia with recycled materials are performed on local roads with very little traffic and low loading. There's not a widespread use of recycled material in other states, but they're looking to increase this. And then trials are close to the source of the recycled product and that would be understandable I guess. Oz roads. So Oz roads was mentioned in our pre in the previous presentation and I've just mentioned Oz roads now. Is everybody aware who and what Oz roads is? I'll just say I'll just give them a quick plug. Oz roads is the Oz roads is the peak organization of the Australasian road transport and traffic agencies. OSRO's purpose is to support the member organizations to deliver improved Australasian road transport network. To succeed in this task, they undertake leading edge road and transport research, which underpins their input into policy development and publish guidance on the design, construction and management of the road network and its associated infrastructure. They have a lot of um, guides on their website and it's all for free, which they've from about the past two years previously that you had to be a member with them to get to the guys, but now they've opened it up to everybody, which is good. So in June 2020, transport ministers agreed that Ausroads would undertake a program of works to develop guidelines and model spe specifications on the use of crushed glass, crumb rubber tire, 
and recycle plastics in road construction by the end of 2021. Transport ministers also agreed Osroads would provide an update in, the late, in late 2020 on the progress made to develop these guidelines and model specifications. So, like you said, there was a model specification that everybody could use and it would be, it would be good because there'll be consistency around the country. I suppose there will be some little tweaks for the various um, state road authorities, but so these are some of the current projects that Osroads are doing. So uh, the project is crushed glass is bedding and reemplacement. Scheduled, scheduled for mid next year and they tell us that form that's on track. The crumb rubber road seal um, schedule was mid 2021 next year again, but it's been delayed. So they anticipate delivery at the end of next year. Crushed glass again in concrete, drainage, embankment, fill and landscaping. Scheduled for the end of next year and that's on track. And then the use of road grade recycled plastic and asphalt pavement. It was scheduled for the end of next year, but it's been delayed and anticipate delivery mid um, 2022. And the interim guidelines they anticipate by the end of 2020, which end of this year, which will be good if we get some interim guidelines from them. Uh, sorry, I did mention that Osroads have a whole lot of guides they have a current guide up there, which is under the guide to um, pavement technology, part four E recycle materials. That one they put together, I think in 2012 or, or something like that, but it's, it's out of date. There's not much information in it. So the, I believe they've put it out to tender to update it. And so we just, into the future we'll see a new guide on that that which will be good and i guess that'll coincide with all these other specifications they're doing EPR into the future Okay, so we, we're going to wait for the new specification to come from Ausroads ARB, which is the Australian Roads Research Board, and consider implementation, implementation into our DIPL specification. In the meantime, we'll continue to investigate what is potentially available and sustainable in the territory as a recycled product in roadworks. Explore if, if recycled material enhance the properties or reduce the life of the existing construction material? If not, where can it be used? Look at, alloc look at that allocating a percentage of resealed works to use, to use crumb rubber. I guess it'll tie in with the top one as well. And I guess we also, while we're looking at all this, what can be reused, recycled, we've got to look at improving the sustainability of our road asset management. So that at least we don't deteriorate in our maintenance side of things. Um, so drive the most feasible option for recycled materials where it's not, where it will not have a detrimental effect on existing businesses. Ooh. Oh, it's not behaving like normal. <laughs> tires can, tires, can we produce crumb rubber here or do we need to import it? It's something to think about. Crushed glass, can we manufacture or make it to the Dipple specification at a competitive price? If so, then we can mandate all trench work to have minimum percentage of glass. When there's, I guess one of the things is we've got to consider it across the territory because um, we've got Alice Springs tenant, Catherine, what's availability like down there? 
And then can we use recycled plastic in road furniture, polypop, building materials, and can it be made? Yeah. DPI into the future. Calibrate with others to use um, reclaimed asphalt pavement, materials with crushed concrete, produce sub base material, and also get to understanding of the properties. We need to consider the, the value, dollar, and the environmental cost of importing recycled material into the territory. Stockpile um, reclaimed asphalt pavement material incorporated into future roadwork projects. And how do we incorporate the regional centers where they may not have direct access to recycled materials? Questions we need to ask ourselves. Are the materials we're looking at recycling, recyclable in the future? Or are we only being in the now moment? I think that was one of the questions in the last session was asked. Are we getting real carbon offsets over time? Are we just landfilling in another spot? Are we using excessive carbon to produce recycled materials? Or the cost um, dollar environmental to recycling, the availability of it. Um, what is the best option for recycled materials? It may not be in roads. The challenges ahead and things to consider. How do we, rec how do we recycle our material and not have to import them? Can we make recycling competitively priced? Can we enhance or equal the performance of our existing materials? And where do we start? Supply and demand, do we need to import to create a demand? What targets are to be set and how do we set them? And one of the other things is What's is our understanding or knowledge of recycled materials? Do we need to improve our, educate, our, our knowledge and educate ourselves? And then finally, we can drive it forward if we all work collaboratively. Questions? I'll see one at the back. Great, there's a question at the back. Have we got our roving mic? Yes. While that mic's making its way up there, can we have a round of applause for, for Richard for that presentation? Yeah, hi, Rick Ralph here from the industry body. Um, thank you for that presentation. It, I'm, I have to express that I'm very disappointed to show that there's a lot of investigate, research, consider, review, the reality is Victoria have used recycled content in roads since 1990 to the spec down there. ARRB are doing material now. You can use plastics and then you can buy bollards, you can buy infrastructure materials for the system. We don't need to review, investigate. We just need to do. And I guess this is the frustration of the industry right across Australia, respectfully to all of, except for a few of the road systems, we're overcomplicating what is a very basic and simple principle. You don't necessarily need to use it in the roads. You can use it in the road infrastructure, the gutters, the footpaths, the boards, et cetera. So I guess, you know, to consider whether you import it, the high energy component, there is a recyclers in Australia today producing crumb rubber for roads. They're producing for bitumen. They're producing recycled aggregates that exceed the virgin aggregate process. Why are the engineers so, um, I guess, risk averse in just stepping onto a different train line that goes in the same direction? Because at the speed that people are going, respectfully, the Northern Territory industry will be waiting 20 years. It's very frustrating from an industry perspective. It doesn't need to be this complicated. The risks certainly have to be mitigated and measured 
but the risks are not anywhere near as great as you actually are presenting them. And even if you ask Michael Caltabiano from the ARRB, they're doing some great stuff. I get it if you're putting into roads and I get it if you're gonna put that material back in 20 years, but we're overcomplicating a very simple process that industry is producing material today too. And it's not always about, you know, you talk the carbon, you talk a whole lot of other issues there. That's nonsensical. The reality is there are solutions today that can do the volumes in the territory. Everyone says they're not significant. There's volumes there, but we don't necessarily think, have to think bigger than Ben-Hur. We just got to start doing. So from an industry perspective, it is disappointing that Dipol are taking so long to do it. And it doesn't match with what the national action plan is saying. It doesn't match with what the rhetoric of government is saying. And I think it's uh, just take a couple of risks. It's not that complicated. Uh, noted, and I'll give that message back. Uh, thank you very much. And again, could we please thank Richard uh, for his time? Thank you very much. Cheers, everybody.